What's not to love about chocolate? I'm sure we all enjoy a chocolatey treat once in a while. But today we're going to do something a little different. We are going to explore engineering using chocolate. And you'll be pleased to know that this is an edible activity. Bridges are one example of architectural constructions which have had a really big impact throughout history and they're built to span a range of physical obstacles to provide easy passage for pedestrians or vehicles. Some bridges span water, others span land, as you can see in the pictures here. Some provide passage over roads, roads and railway tracks or even deep valleys. So bridges are designed and engineered with versatility in mind and visual appeal, but it is actually the structural form which is most important for making sure that the, the finished bridge is fit for purpose and that it can withstand the climate change and challenges within the environment which it's integrated. So for example, in some areas of the world, winds are really frequent so bridges must withstand these strong winds and be structurally engineered to do so to construct bridges materials are welded together and you can see in the photographs on the left of the screen some welding taking place so welding is the process by which the edges of two smaller metal components for example are melted together at severely high temperatures in excess of 1000 degrees centigrade and these smaller pieces are then joined together to form a bigger structure and this is done lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of times until a big um, bridge structure is formed. So thankfully for you and I there is a material that can be welded at much lower temperatures and that's chocolate. So we can use chocolate to model some key structures. Throughout this activity we are going to be structural engineers and we're going to investigate the strength of different chocolate structures. You can see on the screen the materials which you will need and I'm now going to take you through a demonstration of what you need to do. What you need um, for this activity is plenty of chocolate, um, a bottle, long straight bottle such as this filled with some nice warm water, half and half from the kettle and the tap will be fine and you also need what's called a jig. Okay so for this you can use any container that you have to hand and what you need to do is using a protractor or an item with a nice clean 90 degree angled corner you're going to mark out degree angle and cut that out okay and this is called a jig which is going to make sure that when we join our sections of chocolate we're going to get nice perfect um, 90 degree angles okay taking your first two bars of chocolate now ideally these should be bars with nice straight sides okay but you can experiment with different ones you could use for example um, milky bars or white chocolate you could even try things like um, curly whirly and you can compare the difference um, between each one so taking the two bars what you need to do is holding the edges against the bottle of water you're going to just get those to melt so that the edges are lovely and sticky okay. and once you have that you are going to lay them into your jig and just align them to make sure you've got that 90 degree angle okay that's great and then you do the same again with another pair of chocolate bars so that you have these two corner sections what you need to do with these is place them in the fridge 
or leave them at room temperature for at least 20 minutes just to make sure that the joins um, have hardened nicely. Once you've done that and made sure that they're hardened correctly, um, you're going to take the two corner sections and you're going to do exactly the same again with those two corner sections and you are going to join them into one box girder. So this is what you'll end up with and this is one that I made earlier. It's one box girder section there. Okay, so what is going to be the difference do you think between this box girder and this single plank? Okay, so have a think about that because we're now going to test them. Here's our test station. So you just want two cups, um, something to balance the chocolate on. We're going to take the single plank first and we are going to apply some weights. Now we're lucky, we, we have stackable weights in the science department, but at home, if you haven't got anything like this about, you could just use a bag of coins, for example. So that's 200. That's 300. 400. 500, 6, stronger than I thought, 7, 8, 9, okay. okay. Let's now test our chocolate good at bridge. 900, 1,000, 1,200, 1,400, 1,700, 1,750, 1,800, 1850, 1900, 2 kilos. Now I'm going to stop there because, as you can see, um, my tower of weights is getting dangerously high, but I hope that demonstrates a point. Think of this, ru think of this ruler as being the single plank. We can apply force and pressure to this ruler and bend it quite easily. And if we were to apply so much force, eventually it would snap. So the difference with the box girder is it was made with lots of side planks, so it turned in this direction. And if we try and compress this, it's so much harder. It's barely budging. So that's the reason why the box girder is so much stronger and is the structure of choice for bridges. So now it's your turn. Why not have a try at the activity I've just demonstrated or alternatively you could use your newfound knowledge of chocolate welding to build some sort of structure. So there's a few pictures to give you a bit of inspiration on the slide but you might like to use chocolate bars, matchmakers, breadsticks, a range of different sweets for decoration and I'd like you to get creative and create your crazy structure. Once you've done that, if you email it to your year manager or directly to myself, Mrs Collins, um, I'd really love to see those. Have fun with it.